Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me. You guys are connecting in, getting a look at our live view from a, a camera that sits in our weather tower, looking down across the observation deck. And you can see, surprisingly enough for us, we're in the clear today. So we're looking out here. Uh, so you're looking down across the object. You can see the railing, which is completely covered in ice. We've got snow build up here across the deck. And you can actually see some pretty far out distance. We can see about 60 to 70 miles fluctuating back and forth going on this morning. Um, you can see some nice undercast here, so clouds that have formed below summit level. So when we walk outside for our observations, it looks like you're walking out over a sea of white clouds. It's actually really, really cool. Uh, one of my particular favorite, favorite cloud types to see. Um, you can even see a little bit of the snow and ice down here on the rocks below. Um, so again, it's a pretty interesting morning. We were expecting to be in the fog, however, we are in the clear above the clouds at this morning, and it is a really nice day so far. So we're going to go ahead and bring you inside the weather room so you can see who's talking to you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this, our maiden voyage, our inaugural run of Home of the World's Worst Weather Live. My name is Ian Bailey. I am a weather observer and education specialist, and I'll be one of the two individuals that will be connecting with you over the next couple of weeks to talk about various different topics and give you forecast discussions, talk about current summit conditions, and take some deep dives into some really cool topics so you can continue to learn from home. Um, so we're very excited to provide this opportunity for you. It's really awesome that we can connect with people all across the nation, maybe even all across the world, to share this really really great information with everybody. So before we really dive into today's topics, what I want to do is just start off by going over some of the current summit conditions so you guys can see just a look at what's happening right now. So you can actually find this page on mountwashington.org under the current summit conditions and you can actually get a relatively live look at what's happening outside here on the summit right now. So we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. There we go. So we actually have, by our standards, surprisingly calm winds right now. So we're hanging out just shy of 24 miles per hour, which is actually pretty low for this time of year. So we're usually seeing winds on average around 35 miles per hour, which would be an incredibly blustery day down where you're at. Um, but up here, that's actually pretty calm for us. And so that's just contributing to the nice conditions that we're seeing outside. And we'll take a look at some other things in regards to temperature. So it is about 30 degrees outside right now. So pretty warm, again, by our standards for this time of year. Um, it has been warming up slowly over the course of the day. We did see a lot of precipitation yesterday. And in, in that, we saw some pretty interesting precipitation. We did get some snow, uh, just shy of about an inch and a half of snow. Uh, and then we got some frozen rain and some sleet and some ice pellets that all melted into a liquid equivalent. So how much water actually fell of just over half an inch of that. So I would say about a half an inch of rain and freezing rain that fell yesterday. So uh, it was kind of rough up here. We were dealing with a lot of glaze ice and a lot of really intense conditions as the main part of that storm started to move through. We could also see pretty far away from the summit. So this red line here is taking a look at our visibility, how far away we can see from the summit. And like I mentioned a moment ago, we can see about 60 miles away since we are in the relative clear at the moment. Uh, and so it's not a terribly bad day you know, compared to what we were expecting to see, at least what I was expecting to see when I got up this morning. And lastly, we'll take a look at this cool little graphic up here in the top left. This is what we call our auto road temperature profile, our vertical temperature profile. So Mount Washington actually has a series of weather stations from the summit all the way down to the base, going down at different levels and different heights of the mountain, what we call our mesonet. And with that mesonet, we can actually monitor things like temperature and wind from the top of the mountain here at the very top of the graphic, all the way back down to the base here at about 1600 feet. And you can see we're kind of hanging just below freezing for the upper two thirds of the mountain. Uh, but when you do get down closer to ground level, closer to the base, uh, you are seeing some warmer temperatures. And so it is kind of interesting that things are playing out as they are. We do have a big low pressure system that brought some storms last night, as I understand. Uh, the night observer, David, was talking to me about how he was actually outside doing some of that de-icing work and saw some lightning. So it's our first lightning of the season for sure. Uh, we weren't expecting that with snow and ice pellets and freezing rain, but conditions were so intense last night um, that they were, it was enough to produce some lightning across the area. So that's pretty interesting as well. So yeah, we'll look at some of our current conditions. And so let's get on to the main topic as to why you guys are here today. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull this up. So part of these Monday broadcasts is what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep dive. We're going to take a really deep look at particular topics going forward. And with this being our maiden voyage today, we're going to introduce you to the observatory, to who we are and what we do, why this is a really important place, a lot of the work that we do some of the crazy weather conditions that we see, and so much more. So if you guys think of any questions over the next few minutes or so, feel free to ask them. Uh, but we're just going to take a quick introductory look at the observatory and what's going on. So let me go ahead and pan over here so you guys can see the screen. 
So yes, welcome to the Mount Washington Observatory. Who exactly are we and what is going on? So for those of you who might not know, if you don't live in the area or if you're not familiar with the observatory, we're actually in north central New Hampshire. So we're in this red circle here on top of Mount Washington, which is 6,288 feet tall. So we are the tallest point in New England and the tallest point in the northeast part of the country. There's really nothing anywhere with, for hundreds of miles in any direction nearly as tall as we are. And so we take observations at a very unique part of the atmosphere. We get to be really high up, kind of like a stationary weather balloon so that we can observe temperature and pressure and precipitation and winds all the way up almost well, actually over a mile high which is pretty cool. Uh, our climate up here so the average type of weather that we see up here is what we call subarctic so for the majority of the year actually for about eight months we are in some pretty heavy winter conditions where we see temperatures below freezing we see winds up into hurricane force or higher sometimes gusting over 100 miles per hour we get tons of snow and tons of ice up here uh, and so it is this subarctic climate in a place where you probably shouldn't be seeing uh, subarctic conditions pretty heavily. So we do get to see some pretty intense winter conditions for about two thirds of the year. And as far as we understand, the mountain was actually formed from an ancient seabed. There used to be glaciers in this part of the world. And so these massive glaciers, as they slowly receded over time, dug out and carve out the northern and southern presidentials to give us the Mount Washington presidential range as we know it today. Uh, and so people have been coming up here and exploring this place since the 1600s. So for hundreds of years, people have been coming up to the summit of Mount Washington to see what it's like up here, to experience the crazy weather, to explore and understand things related to wildlife, like different plants and animals, and just what it's like being up here at the top of New England. So pretty cool that people have been coming up here for hundreds and hundreds of years. So let's talk a little bit about our weather in more terms in regards to our averages and extremes. So the types of different conditions that we see up here throughout the year. So we'll start off with some averages. So our average annual wind speed is 35 miles per hour. Again, so we're a little bit lower than that today. We are experiencing winds a little bit lower than average, but this would be a pretty blustery day down where you guys are at at home. Our average temperature is about 27 degrees, so it's pretty chilly. You have to wear a jacket and pants for most of the year. On average, we see about 300 to shy of 300 inches of snow every winter season. So over that eight month period, we get quite a bit of snow. Uh, and that melts down to about 100 inches of water every single year. So we see lots of precipitation. Uh, I don't know how well you guys can see that at the bottom, but we are in the fog for two thirds of the year as well. So about 60 to 65% of the time, we are sitting up here in the clouds. So we can only see maybe 50, 75, 100 feet, maybe a little bit further than that uh, for often of the year. So when we look outside, we see like a white curtain of cloud outside. We don't get to see terribly far. So when we are in the clear on like days like today, we really do appreciate it and try to enjoy it. Some of our extreme conditions. So Mount Washington recorded a wind speed of 231 miles per hour all the way back in 1934. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but that held as the world record all the way until 1996. That's kind of what put us on the map and brought us to fame uh, and to renown is that we see really impressive wind speeds up here. The warmest it's ever been was 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that's t-shirt weather, comfortable t-shirt weather. Uh, and then the minimum was 47 degrees below ambient air temperature, not even factoring in wind chill. When you factor in the winds for that day, it might have been somewhere around 80, maybe even 90 degrees below for that really crazy day in 1934. And the most snowfall that we've ever seen in one winter season was 566 inches. So that's about 47 feet of snow in one winter season. That's like a four story buildings worth of snow on top of Mount Washington. And that melted to about 130 inches of liquid. So yeah, we get to see some pretty crazy conditions up here throughout the year. And oftentimes it looks like this. So this is the summit of Mount Washington in the winter time. You see tons of ice and snow. This is the Sherman Adams building where I'm connecting to you right now. And then there is the Otter Road, which is a road that actually goes from the base all the way up to the summits so during the summer people can actually drive up and visit but in the winter you get like 20 to 30 feet of snow building up in different sections and so it's very much impossible to drive in those conditions during the winter time so this is what it looks like in the summer uh, we actually do thaw out and we actually have a really impressive ecosystem up here once all the snow goes away so this again is the sherman adams building and a little bit further down from that we have some grasses and some sedge and even further down from that, we have this really special place up here known as the Alpine Gardens. We have some really rare and beautiful plants that people will hike up to and visit during the summer. And these plants have actually evolved and adapted in such a way that they can survive up here for the entire year, even through all the crazy ice and snow conditions. 
we also have critters too. We have lots of little critters that hang out up here on the summit. Uh, nothing big like any moose or bear or things like that. They can't find any shelter or food this high up. But animals like fox and rabbit and weasels, we've got squirrels and flying squirrels and mice and voles. All of these critters have found and adapted to the crazy conditions. So they actually thrive up here throughout the year. And this is their preferred environment to live in. So that's pretty cool. So that's a little bit about the mountain. Let's talk about the observatory, who we are and why we're here. So Mount Washington, the observatory is a private nonprofit organization. And we are up here and have been up here since 1932, recording the weather, putting out forecasts and doing research from the summit. We are supported by membership. And so if you and your family are members of the observatory, really thank you so much because without your help, we wouldn't be up here doing all the good work. Uh, and if you aren't members, we highly recommend you check it out on mountwashington.org because all of the money from membership goes to supporting the organization and allowing us to continue our observations and research. And if you're taking notes at home, this is probably the most important part here. This is our mission. So we're up here to advance the understanding of the natural systems of Earth's weather and climate and to maintain this mountaintop, mountaintop weather station, excuse me, so we can continue our hourly observations, conduct research, put out forecasts, and do educational programs all here from the summit to benefit the public, to benefit researchers, so on and so forth. So we actually have a very important reason for being on the summit throughout the entire year. Now, back in 1932, these four gentlemen here were the founding fathers of the observatory, and it's kind of hard to tell, but in this picture, that gentleman is actually holding a cat. Um, so there were cats up here on the summit as well. And they operated in this building here. So this is the stage office. This is where the observatory was first founded and operated for about five years. And look closely at this building. It's wooden structure and it's heavy metal chains because this is the building where they recorded the 231 mile per hour winds. So this is, you know, imagine being inside of an EF5 tornado in this building on top of a mountain. That's where they recorded that 231 mile per hour wind. Uh, luckily, everybody survived and all the cats as well. Uh, and they were able to get the instrument down from the top of the tower and after a couple of months, get it down and verify that wind speed. And so that was the world record all the way until 1996. So pretty crazy conditions on that day. So we're up here continuing the work that they started in 1932, and there are a couple of different things that we're responsible for. So one of our biggest responsibilities is to put out forecasts. We put out two forecasts a day, one at four o'clock in the morning, usually put out by our night observer, and then one at four to five o'clock in the evening where all the observers come together and take a look at different charts and weather maps and put all that information together and forecast for the top of Mount Washington. We forecast for the valley down below and actually most of the state of New Hampshire. And you can find those forecast products on our website, if you look at the higher summits forecast, we update that twice a day, looking 48 hours out from the time that we put that forecast. We also do lots of research. So we have interns who were coming up throughout the year and taking a look at our data set and all of our information and conducting projects on a lot of different things. So they were working on things related to climate change. They were taking a look at our instrumentation and improving the instruments here on the summit. Uh, taking a look at our winter season and evaluating, you know, we're noticing more meltout conditions, you know, why are our temperatures increasing slower? Uh, and so they've done a lot of really good work up here. And so if you're ever interested in the future, definitely check out an internship position with the observatory because you can do research that will leave your mark and actually benefit the observatory and the public going forward for years to come. So a really awesome opportunity there. But our big focus is taking observations. And this is going to be the focus of our talks on Mondays for the next month or so, where we're going to talk to you about how we go outside and take observations related to temperature, precipitation. We take a look at wind and pressure, all of this good stuff. And we do this every single hour, 24 seven, 365. And that's the primary reason we're up here. And because of that, since 1932, we've developed 88 years of weather data that we can use for research and evaluation and all of that good stuff. So 90 years of information that we've collected by taking these hourly observations. And so we get lots of really good information from that. Um, and then we're also up here to maintain the instruments and the weather station as well. One of our jobs as observers is to go to the top of the tower and actually go through the process of de-icing where we take heavy crowbars and mallets and other tools like that and break the ice off the instruments that build up. We'll talk about rhyming and the de-icing process in another talk in the future. But just to give you guys a little bit of a tease, what I wanted to do was show you an example of what that de-icing process looks like. Um, so if you'll bear with me for just one moment, I thought I had that video pulled up. So hang tight guys. It's our first run, something was bound to go crazy. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, unfortunately I can't find it at the moment, but if you go to our YouTube page and you type in 
120 mile per hour wind de-icing. You'll see the video that I wanted to show you guys and we'll make sure that we post it on our page at some other point so you can check it out. But you can see what this process is like going to the top of the tower and standing without a harness or any straps in 120, sometimes even 130 mile per hour winds. It gets pretty crazy up here uh, during some of those different points of the season. But that is a very important job that we have to do as part of our maintenance of the building. So all of this work comes together again in 88, almost 90 years of observation so we can look at things on a long time period scale and start to make observations in relation to research. So in particular, we can look at temperature and we can see how our temperature has been increasing over the last 88 years and start to formulate questions that we wanna ask based off of that information. So all of this work is super important for lots of different reasons, but going into our research is one of our biggest points for doing that. Oh, okay, and so we do get to have some fun up here too. And so I wanna introduce you really quick to our little fuzzy buddy, Marty the cat. So believe it or not, we have a cat here on the summit. The observatory always has a cat. Uh, we've had one like you saw in the picture with the Founding Fathers. You know, Interestingly enough, Marty is a black Maine Coon cat and it's the same type of cat that was the first one up here. So we've come full circle on our cat species. But it's nice having him up here because he's like a pet, he's a companion, he keeps us company uh, when it does get a little bit lonely up here. Um, he's also a hunter too, so he'll hunt for mice and flying squirrels and keep those smaller rodents out of the building so they don't get into our food supply. So very, very important job. But when he's not working, he's sleeping and he's usually hanging out down here in our living quarters. This is directly beneath my feet. Uh, so this is where we stay in our off hours and we have lots of books and movies and comfy couches, all these things that were donated by really generous members of the observatory. So we're actually quite comfortable up here even when we're not up here in the weather station working. And we also get the added benefit of seeing some pretty beautiful things too. So we get to see the night sky, you can see the Milky Way just with the naked eye like that. And so we have some really great opportunities to see some beautiful stuff as well, including the Aurora Borealis. So this is a very special place, whether you're talking strictly about the mountain, its weather and climate, or the observatory and the work that we do up here, um, this is a really interesting place. And hopefully you guys are excited as I am to learn about this in the coming weeks uh, and to talk about all these really unique and interesting things that are going on. So let's take a moment to talk about that. It's as far as the structure going forward, uh, as far as how we're going to do this in the coming weeks. And so if you go to mountwashington.org and you go to classroom, you'll join us on the home of the world's worth weather live page. So you can see lots of really good information here about when we're going to be doing broadcasts. So we'll be here on Mondays doing these deep dive broadcasts for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll be connecting as well to do a forecast discussion. We'll talk to you about current conditions as well as the forecast for the next couple of days. Um, so that will be happening again Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, so we're talking to you guys on Mondays in particular about specific topics. So down a little bit further, you can find our schedule here uh, for the next month of all the different things we're going to talk about. So we'll start off talking about temperature and all that goes into taking an observation and related to temperature and how we understand it here on the summit. Then we'll go to wind and pressure and precipitation and beyond that we'll start talking about what it's like living and working up here. Maybe we'll talk about different careers in meteorology. Lots of really great talks coming your way in the future. And you can also scroll down to the bottom of the page here and find additional information. You can check out all these links. Some of the ones up here are on our page. So again, you can see the current summit conditions, the forecast, the normals, means, and extremes if you want to do some work with numbers and statistics, uh, information from the NWS and from the Blue Hill Observatory, uh, lots of other links as well. So you can go to like Climate Kids and NOAA Climate, all these great places for additional learning opportunities. And starting next week when we do our first talk with temperature, we'll actually be providing worksheets to do. So you'll have worksheets that are related to these different topics so you can follow along and answer questions about things that we talk about during these discussions just to add more to your educational experience. So definitely be looking forward to that. And just so you guys know, if you're unable to connect during the normal time, uh, so again, we meet at 11.15 and maybe something comes up that day and you aren't able to join us. We will be posting the videos live here on the page as well as our YouTube channel. So you can go there and catch up on anything that you might miss. You can still get the worksheet. You can still work through it and follow along with the video. You could always ask us questions. Even if you're not live, you could always reach out to us directly on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Again, we're here for you. We're here to provide the educational experience to show you what's going on here on top of Mount Washington and educate you about our extreme weather and climate and lots of other really good things. So never be afraid to reach out to us. Always check out this page here. Uh, lots of really good information coming your way. And we're excited um, for tomorrow. We're going to do our current sound conditions analysis and forecast. And then Tom, who is the other education observer on the opposite crew, will be up here on Thursday to do another analysis, another forecast analysis and current summit conditions. And next Monday at 11.15, that's when we're gonna do our first deep dive into temperature and how we take observations in relation to temperature, how we understand it and the different processes behind that particular weather parameter. So 
yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, what I'm going to do is grab my phone here, scroll back and see if we have any questions that you guys want me to answer really quick. I know we're going a little over time, but I just wanted to make sure that we got you all the information um, so that we could be set up for this. So let's see here. Okay, so we have a question from David. He's asking if the thermometers that we were showing are on the sunny side of the mountain. And actually, they're not. You know, So the entire mountain being up here on the summit and its prominence gets sunshine throughout the day. Uh, but the thermometers that you saw in the image a little bit ago are inside what we call a thermoshack. So they sit inside of a little box enclosure with little wooden slats to allow airflow to go through. So the temperature, or excuse me, the thermometers that are inside the thermoshack are just measuring ambient air temperature and they don't get hit by direct sunlight whatsoever. So we're just measuring ambient air. Stay tuned next Monday. We're going to talk about that for sure. Did we get any lightning strikes last night? So I was asleep as the day observer, so I sleep from around 7 p.m. until 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but the night observers, uh, David and Jay, who were awake for that, did mention that they saw flashes uh, while they were outside de-icing, which is not good. You don't want to be on top of a metal tower when there's lightning flashes in the area. Uh, no direct strikes, but again, we did see, or they did see, uh, some of the lightning that was flashing last night in those really crazy conditions. Uh, hopefully going forward, you guys will be able to see Marty. Uh, he doesn't like to hang out up here during the day. He's usually asleep somewhere downstairs, but maybe one day if we're lucky, we can get him on camera just for a minute so you can see him and say hi. Uh, let's see. Where does all the water go from the melted snow? So it melts down into the water table of the mountain, and there actually is a reservoir about, I want to say, 1,000 to 1,200 feet down uh, that we actually take a well from. So that's where a lot of our water actually comes up. We pump it from that far down to provide water for the building. And then I'm assuming it flows down into the valley below, maybe down into the Saka River and other like watersheds in the area. Um, but it does run along a normal water table that runs up through the mountain for sure. Let's see. How does the building not collapse in high winds? So that's a really good question. I think we'll end it here because we're just about out of time. So the building that I'm standing in, the Sherman Adams building, was built in 1980 and actually took about three years to construct it. And it's comprised of like two and a half feet of solid concrete. And within that concrete, concrete, excuse me, there's reinforced steel beams. So the building is actually rated to withstand winds up to 300 miles per hour. Um, so we haven't had the chance to test that yet. We haven't seen winds anywhere near even the previous world record wind in some time. Uh, last winter, we got up to 171 miles per hour as our maximum wind speed, and that's the highest we've seen in about 35 years. Um, so again, really good question. I hope we don't have to test that, although if we survive, it'd be kind of cool, just like they did back in 1932. I still can't imagine how that building even survived up here in those crazy wind speeds. But it'd be kind of interesting to see if the building could withstand all of that. All right, that looks like it's all the questions for right now. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you connect with us tomorrow morning at 11.15. Again, we'll be talking about current summit conditions. We'll provide you a forecast for the next 48 hours. And again, we'll just kind of reaffirm how this is going to work going forward. Uh, take some more of your guys' questions. And we're just really happy, again, to be bringing this to you. We're very excited. Hopefully you guys are too. Uh, and joining us for these really awesome connections. So if you have any other questions, you could always direct message them to the observatory on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'll try to get around to answering them today while I'm doing the rest of my work. Um, but again, we really appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.